We're still in Exodus chapter 5, and we're going to be looking at verses 8 and 9. And it says, And you shall lay on them the quarter of bricks which they made before. You shall not reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry out, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let more work be laid on the men, that they may labor in it, and let them not regard false words. This is Pharaoh's response when Moses went demanding for the people to go, that God wanted the people to be free. And Pharaoh was very incensed by what Moses had demanded to free uh, the Hebrews. There's a lot to learn from this account of the scripture. Uh, you learn about how Satan responds when God's people are breaking free. You also learn about how powerful people negotiate when others want to be free. Uh, there, there's so much to learn from the Pharaoh uh, Moses encounter. Uh, and Pharaoh understood the political and economic implications of what it would mean if the Hebrews were out. It will collapse the economy of Egypt and it will signal to Egypt's enemies uh, that they were weak. And so Egypt was determined that the Hebrews would not leave. So how, how is Pharaoh going to respond? He responded by attacking the people Moses wanted to free. And he laid more burdens on the people, made the lives of the people more miserable. And why was he doing that? Because he wanted to turn the people against Moses. If Moses wanted to free the people, he wanted the people to hate Moses and to link their hardship to the efforts of their liberation. Isn't it amazing? The person who is trying to liberate you then becomes the person that is hated the more. And the main reason why Pharaoh uh, decided to attack the people is because he said the people said, let us go and sacrifice to our God. And that's why he's responding this way. Uh, so that shows you that any time you take a stand for God and you want to do something for God and you want to serve the Lord and you want to be in church and do the will of God, you're going to come against spiritual resistance. Because your enemy does not want you to go and serve the Lord. So anytime you make a resolution that is spiritual, you pray about something or you have a conviction and you want to serve God, you come against spiritual resistance. The reality is that God's plan to set Israel free was fixed. There was nothing Pharaoh could do about it. God said to Abraham, 600 years earlier, uh, that he was going to do this. He said, your, your descendants will be slaves in a nation, and I will take them out after a certain time. So God had said it. He had told Moses at Mount Horeb that he was going to deliver the people. This was a spiritually finished fact. And Pharaoh knew it, I suppose. He knew he couldn't stop God, but he could turn the people of God against the purposes of God. And that's something to take note of. You see, what, what God wants to do in your life, the devil cannot stop it. Your enemies cannot stop it, but they can turn you yourself against God's purposes because God's purposes work with you. God's purposes work with your cooperation, with your obedience. And all the enemy has to do is to get you to a state of mind where you start fighting God's purposes or fighting God's will. And that's exactly what Pharaoh is doing. He's not fighting God, but he's fighting God's people. He's not even fighting Moses, but he's fighting the people for whom the liberty and the freedom would benefit so that they would turn against Moses and hopefully that Moses would turn against God. And in doing that, in this runabout way, Pharaoh will get his purposes done that gives you a view of spiritual warfare and how it happens. It's not the enemy cannot attack God, cannot even attack the messenger of God, but can attack you and turn you in such a way that you forfeit your own liberation and your own liberty because that is the only thing, the only weapon available to him. 
And I pray that God will open your eyes to any such maneuver against you so you don't fall prey to the snares and the tricks of the wicked one. Let us pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, help me to stand firm when my situation gets tougher and tougher. I refuse to bow to enemy attacks. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I trust that you've been blessed. I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mesa Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.